Hi dear students, how are you doing? It's a pleasure to connect with you all again. So today we are going to talk about very, very important topic and that is your internship. You know, internship is basically a transition where you're going to shift from your academic mode to your professional mode. And the idea of uh, internship is that, you know, whatever you've studied in your three years or four years or three and a half years, you must apply this in your practical approach. And that is why, you know, <clears throat> uh, internship is a part of your curriculum. Now, a lot of students come to me along with their parents and they want to know, uh, you know, the typical question is, kis office mein jana chahiye? Um, uh, usi city mein karni chahiye jis mein college hai uh, ya jis mein ghar hai ya inko koi hum bahar uh, bhejein so you know uh, bahut sare unke uh, questions hote hain so we thought we'll do a video on this and you know it will answer a lot of questions to uh, the students as well as to the parents now uh, the question is where should i do my internship so if i have to really really answer this question I would say that you should go to your place, go to a place where uh, they are giving you a lot of opportunities. They are giving you a platform where you can explore yourself and a place where interns are considered as an integral part of the office where they are being involved into the uh, projects, into the day-to-day -day working of the office. And, you know, it's not that, you know, intern is there, you know, and he's doing something which is like a support uh, to the office. No, you know, I mean, I believe that, you know, you should go to an office where, you know, they are actively involving you in the in the <clears throat> in the office where uh, you're working. And of course, you're you're learning uh, in this whole process. Now, when I say that, you know, an office is involving you uh, in their works on a day to day basis, it means that you also must possess some skills which this office will require or which any office would certainly require. Now, if you have those skills, it will not be very difficult for you to get absorbed in any office, I believe. But at the same time, <clears throat> it is important for you to understand uh, before applying to any particular firm for your internship that what are their systems? Uh, are you comfortable with their systems or not? Because they are not going to change their systems uh, because of interns, you know. So check out their systems, check out their number of staff, check out their timings, check out, you know, whether this is a strict office or it's a very flexible office or, you know, what kind of opportunities they're really giving to the interns because uh, <clears throat> your objective of internship should be very, very clear. Uh, so you exactly know what is your interest, whether you want to really go to a very serious office, you want to work on a large scale project, you want to work on a small scale project, you want to go to a firm which is um, uh, lesser, uh, you know, which has got staff, which is less in number, or you want to go to a firm which has big number. So, you know, you have to really know where you want to place yourself and where you want to be, uh, you know, uh, after your uh, internship. Now, the idea of internship is, um, you know, guys, you can start making your notes from here. This is very important, is to build confidence in you. Now, when I say that, you know, it builds confidence in you, it can only come when you work there, when you are involved there, when you start giving an output, you know. So when you see yourself that, yes, you are able to contribute to the project, to the team, to the office, you automatically get motivated and you feel like, you know, getting into the uh, offices, getting into the work, you are a part of the team. And that is what internship for you uh, guys is. Now, when you say that you're going to get into the teams and you're going to uh, be a part of it, there's certain attributes that you need to possess because you're getting into the office or a professional life. And that is your punctuality, your knowledge of softwares, you know, because you are a guy or a girl who's going out of the college, you know, and you know the latest softwares which are being um, used, you know, your behavioralism, your professionalism, the way you dress up, you know, your dressing sense, um, your ability and capability of working and in order to complete the task on deadlines is very, very important. Hence, these are the skills. These are some skills which are very, very important when you work uh, 
in an office where you're an integral part of the team. And when you do this, I think any office would love to absorb absorb you and you know make it make you a part of the working team. Now, <clears throat> there are certain things which um, you should try and um, approach the um, maybe principal architect or maybe some senior, maybe somebody from the office who can tell you these certain things. Please take note of these. You know, you can take your paper and pen and please write this down. This is going to be very, very helpful. Now, here I go on this. You know, you should go through the, some real tender documents. So when I say go through, it means that, you know, at least ask them if there are any and just go through. You can take a photocopy, take them home and, you know, just revise them. I mean, just read them. And if you have questions, the next day you can ask your seniors, you know, um, these are the terms and conditions. How do you cope up with this and how do you met this challenge or whatever, you know. So tender documents are important. Um, if you can go through some contracts, you know, contracts between contract uh, of the um, you know, it could be between the client and the contractor, it could be between the architect and the client or whatever. So go through the contract, look at the format, look at the language, look at the format in which it uh, for, format in which it, it has been drafted. Um, you know, it will give you an idea of how important little little things are and how precisely they are being put in these documents because tomorrow you're going to deal with all of them then you know of course yes the boqs you know um you know uh, there are two kinds of boqs you know one is before the project is started and once you know after the project is completed so you know you make a boq first and then you do the project and at the end you again conclude so there's always a variation a little bit so you must understand that in what material what variations are coming so if you can go through any of these boqs of the ongoing project or just completed project it is going to be very very uh, beneficial then you can also check the um, you know, bills which are being submitted by the contractor for checking, you know, and that could be in terms of rates or that could be in terms of the area verification on site. So you must get involved into this kind of a document as well. I again request you, please take a note of these points that I'm telling you when you write an email to your um, uh, email to the firm where you want to apply, you can request them that, you know, I look forward for all these kind of things, you know, it will give you a very, very professional impression about you. Then you should also look forward to, uh, you know, to do the market survey, which could be uh, material based, which could be new product launch base, which could be rate based, anything, you know, but market surveys are important. And if you do it relevantly for a project, uh, it will be very helpful. And you can even ask your uh, ask your office that, you know, whenever there's a national holiday or a Sunday, you can go out in case if the markets are open you know, check out for them and then, you know, update that this is what this is something new that I saw, if this is helpful for a project, you know, then you can float it to them. Then, you know, <clears throat> vendor interaction, very, very important. There are a lot of vendors which will come to the architect's office with the new product, with the new range and, you know, a new technology and application and whatnot, you know, so you must get involved there, you know, it will enhance your knowledge and you will understand how these, uh, how important these vendors are because sometimes they play a very, very key role in completion and in finishing of the uh, project, you know. Then uh, very important is client interaction, you know. If uh, office can permit you to sit with the clients and, you know, they can make you witness the opportunity um, of, you know, making the minutes of the meeting uh, between the client. When you're on site, you know, uh, your architect is there, you know, the client is there and you get a task of doing um, you know, site making the site visit report where you have to be very conscious, cautious on the site to document everything on the piece of paper and then to produce it and then get it checked by your principal architect and then it gets mailed to the client. So there's a process of, you know, um, site visit documentation and recording, you know. Then, you know, purely documentation is uh, important. Documentation and how to keep the record is again a very important feature which you should look forward to in your internship, you know. Now, above all this, above all this is the basic thing which you must give to the office. First, you know, you have to have good skills in architecture design or interior design. Then you're talking about presentations, you know, so you should have a good presentation skill. And nowadays, you know, presentation is no more like a one software thing. You know, you'll have to <coughs> kind of integrate three, four of them together and then, you know, make a presentation out of it. Um, uh, 
Submission drawings are uh, another factor because you know when you do a submission drawing, it means that you will also have to have knowledge of bylaws. Now, bylaws um, are again a, is again an important aspect because you have to you have to kind of uh, understand the bylaws and then you have to uh, kind of reproduce these uh, in terms of uh, uh, knowledge, in terms of graphics, in terms of the dimensions, in terms of the lines on piece of paper. So if you are able to do some submission drawings in the office, this is going to be very beneficial because you will have certain questions coming out from the bylaws. So if you start doing that, you will understand that how important by bylaws are because they impact your design uh, incredibly, you know. So it is important for you to understand that, you know, uh, bylaws, submission drawings and site execution, the three are kind of, you know, integrated very, very um, strongly now you know it's a request to all the students that since you've gone through this video i request you to kindly subscribe the channel because we're going to come up with a lot of videos like this also i believe that you've made your own notes which you're going to put up in email when you request uh, for your uh, or rather when you make your application for your internship and um, this video is going to be very very useful you can again go through this video you will again extract certain points make a formal draft if you have any questions please write this down into the comments i'll be happy to answer you and if you need any kind of another video or a support or help in this you are most welcome i'll be more than happy to help you and to assist you thank you so much good luck